Hi, I'm Emmy, and this is my senior artist talk. Trinity's art department asks us the question, what is art? As a sophomore, I was unsure. Is art whatever you want? Is art communication? Do you have to be talented to be an artist? Three semesters later, my own definition emerged. Art is a personal communication between the artist and the viewer. Each person has a theory of the beautiful, but real art can even be ugly at times. Take this image of the migrant mother, for example. This image handles ugly and scary realities of the Great Depression. However, the image captured here is a beautifully juxtaposed image and shows a different side of life and experience. In search of a definition, I assumed art was realistic and a representation of reality. This definition inhibited any hope of being a productive artist. My obsession with the perfection prevented me from starting any projects until I barely had enough time to finish them. Eventually, I realized that there was no such thing as the perfect idea. My personal experience is what made my art good. This realization started by taking pictures of my friends in our free time and turn into the work that I'm doing now. Now I avoid the perfect idea. I focus on what is meaningful to me and my own personal experience. This authenticity based on my experience rather than copying somebody else's experience is what gives my work its impact. Rather, I use artists that influence me and help me connect my experience to theirs. An example of an artist that influences my work is photographer Julie Weber. She uses reclaimed color film transparencies from her job at Walgreens in the 90s as a film development technician. She hoarded discarded color film, outdated photo paper, and discarded photo film. The images of anonymous family trips showing photographic goodbyes were beautiful and impactful. Her lecture jump-started some of my own thoughts about the use of old materials repurposed towards something that causes the viewer to question why we hoard those things. Weber's example made me think about what I had stored in the basement, the garage, the attic, and under my bed, and how I could make that stuff meaningful and personal. Another artist that influences me is Robert Maplethorpe, who was a photographer in the 70s that shot controversial and provocative images through his own experience as a gay man. Although my work is not as provocative, Maplethorpe is another example of using very personal imagery that represented his previously unrepresented community. My work represents my own generation's culture and what we inherited, its politics, religion, and entertainment, etc. This all brought me to what I'm showing today. This work is about the obsession with vintage nostalgia or retro aesthetics. I myself am obsessed with all things vintage. I love fashion from times before and incorporating it into my own style. I love listening to my dad's old records from the 80s and 90s and buying my own to add to my collection. I love the aesthetic of film and Polaroids from old and new cameras. I myself have a fascination with the vintage aesthetic, which caused me to question why we as a culture hold on to these things of the past. Is it nostalgia? I started by looking at what my family had stored on our shelves, and then I looked at what made an image retro. Most recently, I started thinking about how when someone says the common phrase of, oh, I do not belong in this decade, or I belong in the 60s, they're met with the question of why. A lot of times the answer to that is that it was a simpler time, except that is not the case for a lot of people. Whether we think it was a simpler time because of how those decades are portrayed in the media or what we have learned from the nostalgia of relatives, the fact for a lot of people is that it was not a simpler time. This act of diving into the retro and the vintage using media and fashion is a distraction from the past and present events. The work I've put together for this show is requiring people to get comfortable in a lounge chair, watching an old sitcom, dwelling with all the cool and fun vintage imagery, but then the viewer sees that the Dick Van Dyke show that's playing is not the original. There's something intertwined in the video. The viewer sees a scrapbook that uses different media excerpts from the past in order for viewers to step back and think about why they're getting so comfortable in a time that was never comfortable for a lot of people. I specifically chose iconic imagery from each decade starting in the 60s, both good and bad, so the viewer can see how our nostalgia allows us to forget the bad things. Vintage nostalgia is great. It gives us a break from our own realities and it's a joy to look at. However, is this past really be better than where we are now? Is it the same? These are just a few of the questions I'm wanting people to ask themselves 
when they dwell in a living room of the past. Thank you.